So I'm gonna talk about Seagull for a couple minutes. Uh, Libby Apple is the director of the Seagull. Uh, I'm sure many of you know and are familiar and love Libby, because uh, to know Libby is to love Libby. Um, but we start every rehearsal uh, reading a letter from Chekhov, so I thought I would do the same thing here. Oh. All right. Um, this one is dated October 21st, 1895, to A.S. Suborn. Thanks for the letter, for the warm words and the invitation. I will come, but probably not before the end of November, since I have a devilish lot of work. First of all, this spring, I shall be building a new school in the village in my capacity of trustee. It is necessary, well in advance, to ready the plan, the estimates, to take trips now here, now there, and so on. Secondly, if you can imagine such a thing, I am writing a play which, probably I shall also finish no earlier than toward the end of November. I am writing it not without enjoyment, even though I am frightfully unfaithful to stage conventions. <laughs> a comedy, three female roles, six male, four acts, a landscape, view of a lake, Lots of literary talk, little action, a ton of love. Your Anton Chekhov. Um, I wouldn't. I, I was thinking about what Louis had said about you know is is the is the seagull? It's supposedly a comedy. Is it actually a comedy? Um, and I was also listening to uh, what my colleagues were saying about their the separate love stories, R and J and you know Romeo and Snakeylet. <laughs> and I think uh, our little play, which takes place in the new theater, which is a very intimate space, is really, we give you love quadrangles, love triangles, a lot of really unhappy love stories, um, which are very funny and sad and tragic. Uh, and, yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, the opening line of this play is, why are you always in black? I'm in mourning for my life. I'm unhappy. <laughs> um, and it just sort of goes from there. Uh, and in terms of period and, and, and production concept, uh, you know, it's set in, in the period that it was written, which is 1890s Russia um, in the country. And in terms of the, set, the actual setting, our set designer, Christopher Sibo and Libby had a discussion in which Christopher was asking about where's the location of the lake, the world famous lake. And Libby said, well, the lake is everywhere. And so what she has created along with the designers is a beautiful world um, that has, through design, centralized the conflicts that take place within the play. Um, sort of the major conflict ideologically in the play is between Constantine and Trigorin and these two generations of Arkadna and Trigorin and the older generation that they represent, as well as the younger generation with Nina and uh, Treplev. Um, who's also Constantine. The Russian name thing will all make sense to you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> or Allison will die trying to make it make sense to you. Um, but essentially, Constantine stands for this idea of symbolism, of, of a new way of t storytelling. And Trigorin represents the old guard, and, and the older traditional literary storytelling position. And through the design, Libby has taken what would normally, or what would, we would think of as realistic elements and turned them into symbolist gestures. So when we hear the music from across the lake that's supposed to be playing by a band across the lake, it's actually, it actually sounds like the lake itself is singing to us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so, what Todd has done, what Chris has done, and what Deb Dryden's costume, Deb Dryden's costumes ground us firmly in the reality of 19th century Russia what the other two have done in concert and working both with and against echoing both the ideas of the play um, and Libby's own vision um, have created, I think, a really magical world um, that somehow tr is both realistic and magical. Um, and so that is the place that we, we have set our seagull. Uh, it is truly in the lake of the lake um, and yet you know, Libby says this to me at least a dozen times in rehearsal, probably a week. You know, there's no action in this play. Not a whole lot really happens. So if there's no emotional stakes, if there's no emotional truth happening, we are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 at the beginning I was like, I'm okay. Um, but I found that her process, which after, you know, 12, 15, 12 years of being here, 15 years, however, Libby's been here a long time. 20 seasons. 20 total. seasons total. Mm -hmm. um, I found her process in which she puts such a tremendous amount of trust into these actors um, and their ability to be so courageous in fulfilling these roles and, and truly being 
uh, emotionally naked and going to places that I I just haven't seen before and bringing truth to the words uh, that are, you know, this is Libby's adaptation of her literal, literal translation from Allison. And so for Libby, who's had a lifelong love affair with Chekhov, and I mean a love affair with Chekhov, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to have really uh, the marriage of her and Chekhov's words on stage and to have this story uh, and these actors is a truly, it, it's truly a pleasure to have been in the room. And I think when you come and you sit, you know, very often there's the kind of theater like this where there's us up here and, and you down there and it creates this kind of relationship. In the new theater, I believe it's going to be being in the same room with these people, feeling what they're feeling, being, having that little close-up where you can see the pain in Polina's eyes while her lover is, is being praised for being promiscuous and not being able to say anything and being so close that you can sense the live wire nerve energy um, of a woman who wants to explode and yet can't. And that is the fundamental <coughs> dramatic dynamite of Chekhov. And I think containing it in this room inside the new theater for these two hours and 35 minutes, uh, that's including 15 minute intermission, um, <laughs> is exciting. Um, you know, when I know in Libby's last season, she did the cherry orchard with, with you. Um, and as an artistic director, I think that's such an exciting play to go out on, you know, if, especially if, if you've had the kind of love affair with Chekhov that she has, um, to end your final season with his final play. Um, and I think to return to, to Chekhov here at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival with his first best play. I mean, there was Ivanov, but what's, I think Chekhov and us would like to pretend that play didn't happen. Um, <laughs> but to return to The Seagull, a play that is about two generations and two different ideas about art and people who are desperately in love and trying to make it. Uh, you know, Nina says, I see now, I see now Constantine. It's not whether our business is, you know, writing or acting, it doesn't matter. What matters is the will to endure. Um, and that, over the 30 something days of rehearsal we've had, where we read a letter every day, um, where this man talks about what he believes about writing, what he believes about art, what he believes the responsibility of the citizen is to talk about these things. Um, I think that will to endure, um, which was birthed certainly out of the character, but certainly out of this idea that w went on to expand itself in, we must get to Moscow, we must work, all these catchphrases that we know are part of the Chekhov lore. This is where they were born. This place all these different characters are different. Are, the more you get to know Chuck, the more you see that each one of them is a mouthpiece and an idea and a love that he represented and put into conflict with. That this was a man who had more than one voice to speak with. And in every single line, it is simple, clear, articulate, well-chosen language that will bring you in, not push you out. Um, I know that Libby is very big on y us using the Russian names and using a lot of Russian language, but rather than serve to alienate you, I think it serves to season the stew. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when you come to see the seagull, um, get ready to be in the room with human truth. <laughs> and that means you gotta endure a little bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave Allison to talk about the story now. Yeah.